Okay. Now, I want to talk about this method of teaching, preaching. Uh, it's Bible study and also preaching. That I call God's nature preaching method. As you listen to my teaching, you notice that I always talk about how good God is. The whole Bible is about that too. How wonderful God is, how loving He is, and how holy He is. So our ministry is to declare to people who God is. Now, but this is not human nature. That you might notice many people when they preach or when they teach, they talk from the human perspective. What it means, they will say something like this. Uh, if you have a problem, come to God and pray to Him and He will help you. This is approaching it from the human perspective. When you have the need, then you come to God and then God will help you. But the Bible doesn't approach it that way. The Bible says before you pray, God already knows your needs. That God has a plan in our life to give us everything. That if God has given His Son to us, He also gives us all things. So when you look at things from God's perspective, it's very different to look at things from human perspective. When people look at things in a human perspective, uh, things will look difficult. So for instance, you hear people say, oh, life is difficult, oh, where is God? Why don't you help me? When people look at things from God, uh, from human perspective. But when we look at the Bible, it's full of looking at things from God's perspective. That the world and everything in it in is is in God's hand. And then when uh, Pontius Pilate said to Jesus, why don't you answer my questions? Don't you know that I have the authority to set you free or to crucify you? Then it's looking at things from human perspective. But Jesus said to him, if not from above, you will not have the power to handle me. So then it's looking at things from God's perspective. It's God who allows things to happen. So without God's permission, you cannot be sitting here judging me. But because it's God's plan that Jesus will be tried and then crucified, so God allowed Pontius Pilate to do that, to judge Jesus. If you read the whole Bible, you see that God is in control for everything for the Israel. Now, when people learn to look at things from God's perspective, his life would be very different. He would know that God is ministering to us all the time. God has made up his mind to bless us. And God will help all those who seek the kingdom of God. And God has a plan in our life. So God has all these things ready for us. 
So I don't have to worry about anything. I just trust in God. Oh, I have a good relationship with Him and obey Him. And then God's plan will come true. Like for myself, my future, I don't know my future. But I know God knows my future. God has a plan how to use my life. So I just follow God's plan. And then God's plan will come true. It, it also gives people good feeling about God. Like when you hear me talk about how God loves us, how God is happy to see us come to Him, that all Christians will have joy coming to God. But when people look at things from people's perspective, then they'll say, oh, I have difficulties now. Where is God? Is God going to help me? Then he would worry. But if I know for sure God is helping me, I will not worry at all. And then I, and then I would want to Follow God's perfect plan. Okay. Now, I'm going to use different passages to illustrate this point. First, I want to say this, that when we talk about God's nature, it's not just about love. Oh, don't shoot some. Sorry. Yeah. It's also about his holiness. Some people think I just talk about the love of God. But this morning you heard me talk about the holiness of God. When I think about the holiness of God, I'm not afraid of God. I like God. Because in heaven, there is, there is no more problems of people. People who might not like you on earth, but in heaven, they will like you. In heaven, we will have no more lust, no more frustration. And we will be perfect, you know, perfectly joyful and perfectly holy. So to follow God's holiness totally is very beautiful. And on earth here too, many families suffer because they don't follow God's holiness. They don't care about each other. They don't forgive. But for me, when I see God is so beautiful, I want to follow God in every way. Including His Holiness. When I always want to bless people, then I will also be blessed. So I want to make my family a place that will follow the Holiness of God. I want the church to follow the Holiness of God. And to me, Holiness is not being very strict. Being holy is to be, you know, loving God and living in the love of God. And obey God in every way. And love God and love people. And I can be very relaxed. I can be very joyful. We, I don't have a stern face to be holy. Now, there are other natures of God too. God's wisdom. His wisdom is perfect. 
kwamba hikima yake hikima yake ni ku his uh, his planning is perfect mipangilio yake ni mipangilio ni ku how he planned to save us is perfect jinsika jinsi ambavyo amepanga kutuokoa imekamilika so i don't have to worry about how to reach out to people kwamba sitaki kuwa na wasiwasi jinsi gani nitafikia watu i just need the guidance of god if God has a perfect plan to save the people he wants me to save. Nataka tu kumfuata Mungu kwa sababu kama ako na mpango kamilifu ya kuokoa wetu nite kwa kwa watu nitawafikia. So if I just follow God's plan it will come through. Kwa hivyo nikifuata nikifuata mpango wa Mungu atajitokeza. So every nature of God that the Bible talks about I will talk about in the messages and then people will understand how wonderful God is. Kila hali ya Mungu ambaye Mungu anaongea juu yake, nitasoma hizo vipengele na zitajitokea zenyewe na utaweza kuelewa. When people are motivated by God's nature, wakati watu wamechochewa na hali ya Mungu, they will not be controlled by the law. Hawataweza kuelekezwa na sheria. Or burdened with the law. Ama waweze kugandamizwa na sheria. Now I have to say it's I'm sorry to say that I've seen many preaching to be law oriented. Samahani nitasema kwamba nimeona nimeona huduma wengi ambao wameweza kuelekezwa ama kugandamizwa na sheria. The basically the preaching is like this. Kwamba mahubiri ni kama haya. You have sin. Kwamba uko na dhambi. Repent. Ni lazima obey God. Usitii Mungu. You're not doing well. Wewe haufanyi vizuri. God doesn't like you. Kwamba you have to obey him. If not God will punish you. Kama utamtii utaadhibiwa. Now it's all it's like a mother telling the child you have to do this do that do this. Ni kama ni kama mama naambia mtoto ukafanya hivi na hivi na vile. Now the Bible doesn't talk like that. Biblia haisemi hivyo. That we are motivated by God's love. Kwamba Biblia inajifundisha sana kuhusiana na upendo wa Mungu. And even when people are weak, hata kama watu ni wadhaifu God loves them. God moves in the heart. And changes them so that they will obey God. Now, I use a daily illustration. Like um, sometimes a, a parents, the parents want to change a child. But the child doesn't want to change. <laughs> But one day when a child falls in love, lakini wakati wakati mwingine mtoto anapoingia katika hali ya kupenda, and then suddenly change. Na anabadilika mara nyingi. When a girlfriend or boyfriend tells him to change. Au a a a mpenzi wake wa kiume ama wa kike anamfanya abadilike because of love. Kwa sababu ya mapenzi. So love can change people. Hayo mapenzi ni za badilisha mtu. And also many Christians when they believe in Jesus the experience of love of God when they hear the love of God and then they suddenly want to change their life I love you when they want to burn the fire and then they want to forgive people and care about people and do evangelism now find you in Jesus but very often the follow up on the christian is law oriented lakini kila wakati mafundisho ya kristo yanaenda inanisha na hali ya kisheria and after a while the person is controlled by law na baada muda fulani mtu anaanza kuelekezwa na sheria he thinks i have to do this and do that na nadhani ana fikira kwamba ni lazima nifanye hivi na hivi and also people tell them you're not doing well enough na pia watu wanamwambia kwamba haufanyi vizuri kutosha Then what happens is then they lose the joy and the freedom. Now why do people naturally fall into being not law oriented? Bona kila wakati watu wanaanguka ama wanaenda katika hali ya kuelekezwa na sheria. Because all people basically follow the law. Ni kwa sababu watu kwa kweli wanafuata sheria. In the family, the parents tell the children. Katika jamii wazazi wanaambia watoto. You have to obey me. Kwamba ni lazima unitii. If you don't obey me, I'll punish you. Kama hautanitii, nitakudhani nitakuba adhabu. You're not doing well so I don't like you. Kwa hivyo haufanyi vizuri kwa hivyo sikupendi. And in the schools too, you have to do this to that. Na kwa shule pia wanaambiwa fanye hivi na vile. Now in marriage they're supposed to have love. Na katika ndoa nataka na kuwa na upendo. But in many marriages the husband will say tell their wife you didn't do this you didn't do that. Lakini katika ndoa nyingi utapata mume anaambia mwanamke kwamba haujafanya hii haujafanya hii. 
There is love and romance before marriage. Kuna mapenzi kabla ndoa. But after marriage, then it's always saying, you wash the dishes, you didn't do it well, you know. Lakini baada ya kuoa na unaanza kusema wewe ukuosha vyombo, ukufagia, ukufanya hili. So basically this society is all law oriented. Kwa hivyo katika katika nyakati hizi tumeweza kuelekezwa makandamizo na sheria. So when pe- many people believe in Jesus, they really don't understand the gospel, the grace of God. Kwa hivyo kuna watu wengi ambao wanaamini katika Yesu lakini hawaelewi kiundani ama kanuni ya injili. They fail to notice the grace in the God, in the Bible that will motivate us. Wanakosa kutambua neema katika Biblia ambayo inastahili kuchochea. Okay. Now right now I'm going to demonstrate this in sermons in uh, how to expound how to explain the Bible messages. Um, first I'm going to tell you this in this method of preaching there can be a number of points you can use in the outline. You can write that down. Okay, now this outline the points you don't have to follow exactly. I'm just telling you the possible points you can have. Yeah, quantum, 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 quantum
spot is he wants to make people joyful. And he, and he can make and he can give joy to people. So one part is about his nature. And, and the other part is how he can give the joy to people. Now for many people, they suffer in depression for many years. But God has a plan to bring joy to them one day. Now, how does God do that? He knows this person's needs. But God has a plan how to put people around the person to bring the person to Jesus and how to bring healing to the person so one day he become joyful. This is a wonderful work of God that a depressed person can become joyful. Like for myself, when I was young, in a family there's always yelling and beating. And when my stepmother came to my home, I started to have nightmares. And I walked in my dreams. And one point it became so serious. That in the dream, I was building a wall. When I finished the wall, I found that I was inside the wall. So I was afraid. And I beat the wall. And it was not, it was, it's not a hard wall like this, it's a soft wall. And I made a hole through the wall. That was how bad my fear was. But God has a plan to bring the joy to me. That one day now I can be so joyful. Isn't that a miracle? And for every person God has a plan to give us joy. So that is God's grace. And then God's commandment, that's the fourth point, fourth point, God's commandment, or God's law, God's law. God's law is that He wants us to be joyful in the Lord, rejoice in the Lord. Now for the law of God, there is a command, but, but there is also a bad consequence if the people don't obey God. If people don't rejoice in the Lord, they will, won't have strength. They won't have strength. They will suffer in their life. So those things we can talk about too. And the fifth point is the explanation of the Bible passage. Now I don't mean you wait until the fourth, fifth point to talk about that. <laughs> I just say make sure that you explain the Bible verse. Now about explanation of the Bible verse is another big topic. Um, it would take too much time to talk about that, you know. It, it take, I think I should, should not talk about that. Okay. Now, and then the number six point is how. So if someone doesn't have joy, how can he have joy? So, we're going to talk about how, you know, remember the five
five steps of victory. This morning, now this is one way how people can be aware of depression. <coughs> And they know it's destructive on a journey what it is. And then biblical principles and find biblical principles. Knowing that God's principle is that we can rejoice in the Lord. We can enjoy God's blessings. And then we can pray. And then we can choose to be joyful. But there are different ways, but there are different ways uh, in different sermons. The main thing is the pastor himself has to find a way to overcome their sin. Or to have victory in a certain a teaching. And then he teach people how to do it. And then number seven is challenge. Do you want to be joyful? Do you want to live in the joy of the Lord? Do you want to put down the burdens? And then number eight. The pastor can lead the group in a prayer. To apply what uh, the teaching in his life, in their lives. Now, this points doesn't mean you have to present it in that order. It doesn't mean you have to talk about all the points. But these are things you can talk about. Now, let me tell you, sometimes I have to preach a sermon without the previous notification. Or when I go to different places like here, sometimes I know I don't know what do, should I teach the next session. Or how, you know, you know, what topic should I preach on? With this outline, I can arrive at a sermon very quickly. And I'll give, and I'll give you a simple outline. Now, a simple outline you can write down. For instance, if I want to preach about love your neighbor as yourselves, okay, so this topic, love your neighbor as yourselves. Now with this way of outline, how can I preach about it? Now the first point I can be talking about negative examples of people. For instance, I might talk about that <laughs> Christians should be loving people. Christians should be loving people. But it's a fact that many people come to church and no one care about them. And many Christians go to church they just come to listen to the sermon and praise God and get help. And how many Christians would care about the newcomers here? How many Christians will care about the people who are weak and needy? Do we live the life of love?
Or when you go, when we go home, do we complain to our spouse or do we love them? So the first point is to awake, awaken people, to let them know. Christians like to say we love people, but many Christians don't really love. And then the next main point, I will talk about the love of God. Even though we do not love God, God seeks us. God seeks us. And then he save us. He work in our lives. To change our lives. Even when we disobey him. He continues to love us. And, and every Christian would have rejected God maybe a hundred times a week. But God is not affected by that. God keeps working in a heart of the person. Even when people serve God a lot. Sometimes they serve God just to do something. But they don't really care about the people that help. But God always cares about each person. No matter how weak the person is. No matter how rebellious the Christian is, God continues to bless the person. So, I would motivate people and say, God is so loving. And then, I can talk about the God's law. God loves people so much. And he wants you as users to spread the love of God. He wants us to have the heart of compassion. When we see people, we see the needs. And we can see what we can do to bless them. And when we follow God's law, to love people, God is very happy. And God, you know, desires uh, passion, compassion, instead of uh, sacrifice. So when we have compassion on people, God is very happy. So that's about the law, what we should do, and then and then uh, um, how God is happy when we obey him. And we can also have warning. And we can also have warning. We can also have warning. When Christians don't love other people, when they have lost their first love, they will be more and more distant from God. And they might be <coughs> preaching a lot, but they are just like a sounding gong, just speaking a lot of things, but no love, and God doesn't like that. So that's part of the law. <laughs> and then how we can have love. Basically, all people are selfish by nature. How can we learn to love? Because we see God loves us so much. God has such a wonderful plan in our life. When we are blessed by God so much, we want to love other people. And then God is happy with you. And He bless your whole life. So this is simple outline. Now I'll say again. So this about love your neighbors as yourselves. The first point will be about negative examples of people who don't love other people. 
sasa ugumu unakuja mali pa kutafuta hali ya uungu katika zile vipengele za Biblia kwa sababu ile mifano mibaya ni rahisi kuzikuyapata and what to do is easy to find akile cha kufanya ni rahisi kupata but god's nature is the hardest part lakini hali ya uungu mali pa uungu i'm going to talk about some topics quickly and tell you god's nature nenda kuongea juu ya vichwa fulani ama topic fulani na kuambia hali ya uungu for instance the message how to how to forgive other people how to forgive others ujumbe ni kwamba jinsi gani utasamehe wenzako Then God's nature, what is God's nature? Kwamba hali ya Mungu ni gani? God's nature, he is a forgiving God. Kwamba ni Mungu ambaye anasamehe hiyo hali yake. So, it should be related to the topic. Ni lazima iwe inalingana na kichwa cha ujumbe wako. It should not just be God loves us. Isiye isiwe tu kwamba Mungu anatupenda. Okay. And God has a nature of forgiveness kwamba Mungu ako na hali ya kumsamaha. Now, in order to show a certain nature is good to show the opposite also. Tunapoonyesha uzuri wa hali, ni pia ni lazima tuonyeshe ubaya wake. To show God's forgiveness, kuonyesha msamaha wa Mungu. We can contrast with human nature not to forgive. Tunaweza ilinganisha ama kuifanisha pia na hali ya kibinadamu ya kukosa kuwa na msamaha. If you go to someone's home and by accident break something precious in the person's house. Unapoenda katika boma la mtu au nyumba ya mtu na kwa hali ya ajali unavunja kitu kile cha dhamana and you ask the person to forgive you. Na unauliza mtu atakusamehe. It's very hard for him to forgive us. Ni vigumu sana mtu huyo kusamehe. Even if he says he forgives you, atakusema kwamba anakusamehe na umevunja television yake. In his heart he won't like you. Katika moyo wake hatakupenda. He doesn't want to invite you again. Ingine hata ukarubisha tena. But God is not like that. Lakini Mungu hayuko hivyo. You know, if God doesn't forgive people, kama Mungu hatasamehe watu. There is no one in the whole world who can find that he can he can love. Hakuna mtu wote wa Mungu atakaye atapatikana kwamba anaweza pendezwa na Mungu. Because he's a pendezwa na Mungu. Because every Christian keep sinning many times before they really repent. Kwa sababu kila mtu anaendelea kutenda dhambi mara mingi kabla aokoke. If God doesn't forgive, none of us has a chance. Kwa hivyo kama Mungu hatasamehe, hakuna yeyote aliye nafasi. So God's forgiving nature is very beautiful. Kwa hivyo ile hali ya msamaha ya Mungu ni haja. You know when I think about that I'm really touched by God's love. Wakati ninapowazi ya hayo ninaguzwa na upendo wa Mungu. Because in my ministry I have come across different people and they get angry with me. Kwa sababu katika huduma yangu nimeweza kukutana na watu wengi na wanakasirishwa na. It's very hard to restore the relationship. Kwamba ni vigumu sana kuregesha uhusiano. And but God is you know he always forgives lakini Mungu kila wakati usamehe. And is easy to have the continual relationship with God na ni rahisi kuwa na uhusiano unaendelea na Mungu so his nature is very beautiful kwa hivyo hali yake ni hali ya ajabu and we all have sinned so many ways to offend God na kwa hivyo sisi wote tumetenda dhambi sana kupitia kwa kenda kando na njia za Mungu but he still sees the potential in each one of us lakini bado anaona uwezo ndani ya kila mmoja because he knows that if anyone let God work in his life kwa sababu anaona kama mtu atawachilia Mungu akatende kazi ndani ya maisha yake his life will improve greatly maisha yake yataweza kusonga mbele god is so wonderful kwamba mungu ni wa ajabu if i use this to illustrate kama natumia hiyo kufanya kupea mfano he's shining 
Iyo ina inangar. He is full of love. Yei amejaro pendo. Full of power. Akorangu. And when it comes to this person, this person is instantly changed. He become a living, loving person. He has more love and joy. God is this almighty loving God. Because I've seen him in so many ways. In anything, any Bible passage, I see God's work. Okay, so God's nature is His has the forgiving nature. And then His action for us is that He planned for His Son to die for us. The Son of God take up the most severe punishment on earth. And to be separated from God the Father on the cross. Because He bore the sins of the whole world. And then He also worked in the heart of people to bring them to repentance. He's patient to work on each person's life. So the two part, first is nature, and second is what he does to bless people.